Well, hello, all my model car building buddies. This here is Glenn's Models. I'm Glenn, and this is take number six. I, I keep messing up and having to start over. So, if I mess up too bad this time, you're all going to see a messed up video. Because <laughs> I'm getting tired of trying. Man, it, it's Saturday night. It's like 2 o'clock in the morning. And I, I won't load this until Sunday morning when y'all are probably seeing it. So, don't forget, uh, before you start it, get you some coffee and some pancakes and some eggs. So, you'll have your breakfast while you watch this video. Okay, now to start off, where am I starting? I'm going to start off up here with my buddies at Spotlight Hobbies. Right there. There they are. Look, you pay attention. Look, they're right there. Okay, they got some new things in, a couple of new deals. Why I'm putting the, the note in front of the camera instead of just reading it, I don't know. I don't know. AMT Hemi Hustler 66 Barracuda. Mid-engine wheel stander funny car. Lots of fun there. Lots of words, too. But that thing is way cool. It's uh, It used to be the Hearst Hemi under glass. You know, and it's repopped now. as a Hemi Hustler. Very cool kit. And they also got the AMT 69 Ford Falcon modified stocker. Those things are cool. There's a lot of, there's a lot of room for detail in those kits. Okay. And now, yeah, okay, seems to be going a little better this time. Thing is back. He was at the tattoo parlor getting a tattoo on his him. And, uh, how you doing, Thing? You, you're glad to be back? Oh, yeah, I am. Well, well. Okay, well, you do your job pointing, and remember, I do the talking. Oh, right, yeah. Okay, um, let me put the whirly jigger out here. And set this guy up on it. This guy is almost done, fellas. I'm telling you, right now, you can't even see him because I ain't got the camera set yet. Okay, there he is. I got the driver in it. I got the, uh, I don't know what you call this, this thing around him here. Hey, this is, a, this is number six. And if I mess up, I messed up. I'm not doing it again. Okay. Um, I want to point out the fact I like to use flat black instead of primer because primer will build up and fill up your tiny details. And I am going to run this chrome. I was thinking about sanding it off, but I'm going to run that chrome down the side. I really want it to look like somebody took old farm truck and cleaned it up a bit and set it down on this thing to drag race. And uh, let me see. Uh, yeah, so let me point this out over here. Uh, when I moved the wheel back, instead of cutting a piece of plastic like, you know, everybody does, I just filled, I just filled it up with mutagen. I put a cover over this side and then filled it up from the back. And then when it hardened up, it took the cover off. And see, nice and smooth. And uh, it's got a slick out coat. We're filling up the gap there a little bit. And trying not trying to stay away from these body lines. I don't want to lose body lines. But the flat black really shows, like you can see right here, there's a little bit of a little bit of precision sanding needed there. And it you once you put it on and it dries and you rub it. See that? It shows everything where you need to work it. Not uh, uh, Fortunately, it's not as bad as it looks. A quick sanding will take most of that out. Okay, now I'm going to move him out of the way. If I, body's getting harder and harder to put back on. It usually works the other way. You know, the more you have it off and play with it, the more it works better. Okay, next is... I want to show this. Um, I think I have to turn off the light for this guy. Now, see how I left that line straight? Uh, I mean, uh, sharp down to here? Yeah, that's so you can tell. You can look at that. You can just glance at that and tell me that's a straight line. And all the body work around it is cool. That down there looks good. Uh, this up here is good. 
The back is good. I got to cut some holes, windows back here. I think I got some van portholes that would look really spiffy back there. Yes, I said spiffy. And uh, I started cutting out in here, grinding out for the rear axle, you know, to sit down on there. I've decided it's going to be a 60s super custom from the 60s, the kind you saw propped up on mirrors with all that angel hair, fiberglass spread around it, and uh, chrome everywhere, lots of chrome. And it's going to be painted like pearl white with possibly a Winfield fade. Yep, I got a nail. I got a chrome nail head motor to go in it. That'll look just tough, and that's what it's going to be. And I know I had a lot of really good names from commenters on what to call it, but none of them just seemed to, you know, butter my biscuits. So I'm not going to have a name on it until I come up with one. I probably. You know, when it's done, you'll be able to look at it and say, oh, I know what that should be called. So, you know, we'll see what it looks like when it's done. May end up using one of y'all's suggestions. I don't know. Okay, this one is finished. Look out, a finished one, believe it or not. I got off my ass and finished one. This is lame uh, Herman's Wrecker. And I'm going to point out some of the stuff. A 68 Coronet back here. That the Whirly Jigger is hitting. See that? Um, see it comes with this little this little trailer? The old U-Haul trailer? Okay. That's what I made the bed out. That's what I used for the bed on this thing. As it comes around, you'll see. Yeah, that's that little U-Haul trailer. And I put in the back this come out of uh, Eddie's playground, part of his play set when he was growing up. He used to hang around this thing all day. And Herman said, that looks that looks like it would make a pretty good boom for my wrecker. So he got it and put it in the wrecker. Also, no wrecker is complete without arsenic and beak of crow. You got to have those. That's part, that's part of the, that'll get you out of a ditch is what that'll do. Got the caution lights up there and the monster towing on the door. I cut out the circles out of uh, some white decal paper and put it on. And then the monster towing was on clear, so I just set it on top. It looks like it's on the moon. Monsters love full moon, especially Eddie. Eddie loves that. It makes him howl, turn into werewolf. Uh, Grandpa likes it, too. Most, uh, most all the monsters love that full moon. My friend Red at Red Scale Scrapyard, parts of parts, I uh, don't have his card handy, but he sent me these headlights, and they are very cool, oddball headlights. that I, I love them, man. They look great on this thing. And this is Herman Munster's record. It, Munster's have several records now that I've built. I've come up with these ain't kits this is a total this is a total parts box build oh let me tell you about the motor for those of you who are new and don't know about the motor it is a hemi with a cross ram intake with uh come here thing help out and it's got a uh right there it's sitting on a uh intercooler on top of the cross ram and then two blowers and here we have two electric high high speed high torque motors to spin the blowers and they're computer controlled to match the rpm of the motor and they're controlled by a little a little uh switch on the dash in there that will regulate you can turn the boost up or down on it for more power or less power depending on what you're doing ain't that right thing oh yeah okay and uh let me see um, that's about, that's about all I got. She's done, finally. I mean, how long have I been working on this thing? Like, at least one and a half forevers. I got taillights on it. That was the last thing I did. And there she is. Munster towing. Yeah, you know, I got, I don't even know how many Munster tow trucks I've got now. 
here's one. <laughs> I figured as long as I was showing them, I might as well bring this guy back out. This was the iced tea, Tom Daniels iced tea. And it's reworked into a Munster Toe vehicle. I got to put Munster Towing on it somewhere. I got a couple more Munster Towings. That chain, boy, that thing is ready to go, ain't it? It's haunted. I didn't touch it. It's just doing that on its own. It might be some of Ghost Rider's chain. I don't know. Anyway, I thought I'd, I thought I'd bring this out. It was in the in the garage, which I'm fixing to bring out and show you. As soon as I move Whirly out the way. Oh, before I do that, I have a forgotten Friday on Saturday morning on Sunday morning. This is a Diora kit. Diora. Yep. And I'm making it into a wheel stander. I was. Let me see. All kinds of parts in there. Wheel falls off. That's not a good wheel standing trait right there. Um, I got the hole cut in the floorboard so he could see where he's going. Let me see. Oh, yeah, I got the gauges in there. and got two levers for steering it and two brake pedals for steering it, I guess. And shifter over here on the side of the seat. Steering wheel. Yeah, coming along pretty good. Um, the wheel just ain't going to stay on. What I got is two Hemis hooked together with chain drive to go in the back of it. They go right, right there. Right there's where it goes. And then there's a transmission that goes, where's the tranny? Transmission here that goes, it goes on to the back. And now I'm really proud of this. I found this. I hadn't looked at it in a while. It's been about two years since I started this thing. Maybe longer. But uh, this is a V drive I made. You can see two pieces of plastic stacked together. And I put these two circles on here and then that. The braces, what do you call it? Fins. There you go. That's neat. Tranny goes in, then it goes to the rear axle, rear end. That's a nice looking piece right there. Okay, and I got these headers that will go coming off the head of Hemi and blast straight back. That's why they sit so far apart, because I got, I got four of these headers to go on there. And I also got these stacks from a... Uh, I think I, I think these came from two different uh, boot, uh, Tijuana taxis. Yeah, I want to use those. Although back at the back when I was doing this and I got all these parts together, these were the best stacks I had. They're not bad. I think I will use them. But anyway, that's that's what this guy gonna be a Dior uh, wheel stander. I got most of it, and he's ready to go. I could finish it up. The interior is done. Paint on it is terrible. It needs to be took down and another, another color painted on it, because that's a terrible, terrible, terrible color. I don't like it at all. <clears throat> Next thing is this. Oh, my goodness, this giant, huge gas station. This thing is real estate, and it takes up real estate. I, I got, let me see. I got, I got some stuff over here. And uh, tires and batteries. I got the decals on it, basically, what I'm trying to say, and not doing too well at it. Got Munster's towing and performance up along the top there. I got the wallpaper. Bing. Yeah, I got it. You got the wallpaper put in back there. And I got all kinds of, of wood, uh, old-timey looking wood to make the shelves out of. 
I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fill this up with all kinds of high performance stuff. A couple motors on stands and stuff like that. And over here, I really want to put Grandpa's Laboratory in thing. Sorry. I want to put Grandpa's Laboratory back here. With the with the two test tubes and the and the and the curly things, <laughs> you know, and all, yeah, and a cauldron. I'm gonna put all that back there, and on this side over here, speed parts. But that's that's in the future, which hopefully is coming soon. I got this. This is almost done. This part, the building, of the interior stuff is separate, and the. Uh, I'm going to have to turn this. So you, there, I got the bat rooms in there. And the men's and women's bat room. And I got the windows in. Got those spider webs up there in the corners. And the monster towing and performance up on this end. I, I got to make... I got, I got these little bitty skulls that I want to use to make the door handles for the front door and the two bat room doors. Okay, yeah, this is this thing is coming along pretty darn cool. Well, that's everything I got to show you, but I do got a story about something that happened to a friend of mine. Um, <laughs> I think I was only 16 at the time. I was still living at home, and he was too, you know. Um, his... <laughs> Jeez, I don't know where to start. Um, let me set this up. He, his brother, just got a brand new dirt bike, okay? And dirt bikes were rare at that time. This was, uh, I don't know, around 70, 71, something like that. And the dirt bikes were rare back then. I had never seen one before, you know? And he said, my brother, he come over, my brother got a dirt bike, come look at it. And there wasn't nobody home. His parents were gone. His brother was gone at work. And, uh... We went out in the backyard, and there was a dirt bike. <coughs> Honda, big red Honda standing up in the front. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> and uh, all shiny and new. I had to pause while I finished coughing. And uh, it was beautiful, man. I had never seen one. It was sitting up high on them knobby tires. Okay, now let me describe the where it was and the scenery and what was all around. We was in his backyard on the patio. He had a patio. These guys had money. It was an upper that We weren't, I wasn't upper scale, but they were. And I don't know why that matters in the story, but they had a nice house with a patio. And the patio, let's pretend this is it. It was pretty close. The patio, okay, and here's the dirt bike. Show him thing. It's right here. And uh, I told you to let me do the talking. Sorry. And, um, okay. You know these lawn chairs? There's a wooden lawn chair. It starts low and, it, and at the bottom to hang your feet down. And then you got your sitting down and then the lean back on it like that wooden one. Okay. Well, that was sitting right here, you know, with the back to the window. And the dirt bike was right here. Just, just in front of it. And my buddy, he says, I have got to start this. You got to hear it run. I said, no, man, your brother will kill you if you do any, if you start that up mess with it. He don't even want you sitting on it. You know, and I know he didn't. And uh, my buddy said, no, no, man, I'm, I'm going to show you. And he jumped up on it, sat down, and uh, kicked the starter, and it fired up. And it surprised him, I guess, because he wasn't expecting it to start so it so easy. <laughs> Sorry about that. I thought the timer had quit clicking there, and I was still on pause. I'm having a terrible time with this one. This is the sixth one. Anyway, when it started, he had a he didn't know nothing about riding no dirt bike. By the way, I mean he couldn't have it. He was a kid just like me. Okay, so here he is sitting on the dirt bike, laying down on the gas tank with the, holding on to the clutch and the throttle. He goes, rum, rum, like that with the, I was doing my hand over here, rum, rum, like that, and uh, revving it up. 
and he revved it up all the way, and for some reason, his hand come off of the clutch, and I guess it was in first gear. <laughs> it took off like a rocket with him laying on. He's a fat boy, too. He was kind of heavy, and he was had his legs dragging behind him, laying on the gas tank, hanging on for dear life, and he took off, and he hit that lawn chair, and he rode up it, and right into the picture window, and through the picture window, and his mom, dining room, he, she had this big antique dining table, what was really nice, and uh, <laughs> sitting right there, oh man, he went right through the glass, the front wheel of the bike was on the table, he was still holding the throttle, wide open, and it was chugging, brum, 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 like that, pushing the table, and scarring it up, tearing it up. And I come in through the side door there, and I hollered at him, Hey, man, let off of the gas. And he did. He let off the gas, and it all calmed down. You know, and he's just sitting there with his eyes as big as half dollars. <laughs> and he looks over at me, and I said, I told him, I said, Well, looks like you got this under control. I'm going to go get a sandwich, and I'll see you later. And I lit out the door and ran all the way home. Because I did not want to be on the same planet with him when his parents and his brother got home. And <laughs> I'm not going to say what happened to him, but I didn't see him for a while. He was lucky he didn't get cut up going through that. But man, that was it was fun for me to watch, actually. You know, all evil can evil. Anyway, that's my story. And I'm sticking to it. And it happened. It's a true story. And... uh now, this is where I ask for a uh, uh, comment. If y'all don't mind commenting, and if you don't mind waiting a little while for me to answer it, I'm very busy these days and uh, and lazy. Don't forget lazy. Don't even get me started on the lazy. And uh, let me see. Comment, like, if you don't mind, if you like this, you join, eh, hit that like button just like that. Share. There's a share button where you can... Send this mess to your buddies. You might have some friends you want to get back at, you know, so send this to them. And also, uh, let me see, like, comment, share, subscribe. What are you waiting for? It's free. And if you subscribe every time I make one of these crazy, stupid videos, you'll see what it is. So that's it. I'm done. And I'm going to leave now. And y'all... Remember to not forget, and I will see y'all later. Bye.